Okay, all right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Dad's Life Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Flack 2.0, and here in the studio via satellite, I have the, f- oh, I guess I was going to say four, but the three other amazing gentlemen of the podcast. Um, we'll go ahead and get started with introductions upstairs. Right above me, we got Mr. Crimley. What up, Mr. Crimley? What's up? How's everybody doing tonight? Good, good, good. We got a category to me. It's weird how these things get laid out. Um, but we got New York God over here in the diagonal corner. What's going on, party people? And we also got Sensei John over here, too. I guess this would be my left, his right. Hey, what up, y'all? Uh, we are the Fantastic Four. Let's get it right, Sean. Oh, my, my bad. <laughs> my bad. The Fantastic Four. I'm going to come up with something that's... Anyway, we'll talk about that offline. Anyway, <laughs> welcome. This is actually season five. Welcome to season five of the Dad's Life podcast. We're going to be starting it. Um, uh, but this is technically like our second season together, which I'm super excited about. Um, if you guys haven't heard, uh, let's see, episode 10 of uh, season four was a recap. Go ahead and check that out from last week. Uh, we're going to be doing our little change up this week or this this season going forward, we're actually going to do it on our Patreon recording after the show. We don't know what it's going to be called yet, but again, thank you for all those patrons um, uh, for supporting us last season. You're going to be looking out for a little bit different content this season. If you don't know what we're talking about, go ahead and head over to ShadowPackWest.com, and there's a link right there at the top. As soon as you get onto the page to go to our Patreon page, and you can start your patronage for as little as a dollar a month. And that'll get you access to a little bit more content from us and kind of seeing um, the first season was about what's behind the scenes. Um, So, yeah, you know, so thank you for your current patrons. And again, if you are interested in becoming a patron and helping us uh, continue the show, head over there and uh, um, start your patronage today. Uh, Before we get started, oh, we are going to be talking about uh, fathers that... um, father figures that aren't our actual fathers so that'll be the main topic for today and then we'll kind of hot dog around it's the first mm. episode of the new season and we'll see where the conversation takes us before we get started does anybody have any shout outs they might want to shout out hmm uh well it's always a shout out to my lord and savior uh the man above our god uh thank you for making this possible Waking us up this morning and being able to be on this uh, lovely podcast that our brother Sean has so lovely blessed us with. <laughs> okay, thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, currently, anything you want to shout out before we get started? Uh, the only thing I really got is Nord God and his family with their trials and tribulations they're going through. Shout out to them. Staying strong. Thank you, thank you. Okay. You already got what you got for us. Shout out to you. I'm me? shouting out baby Freya, my daughter. Because today, the first time in God knows how long, uh, <laughs> maybe ever, um, it was all about me today. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So the, the, the wife went with my mom, my sister, my stepdad, um, and the baby to Memphis because uh, it was my sister's birthday this last week, so that's what she oh, wanted yeah. to go out there, go to Cheesecake Factory and go around to the mall. Well, my mom sent me an audio recording on the trip back of my daughter just crying, Daddy, Daddy, and how everybody was just kind of ignoring her because she was being annoying. Um, but you got to love that. It, 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 oh, dude, I did love that, so I <laughs> FaceTimed her, right? And then um, we were sitting in here, right during uh baby put down time and normally our routine is mama does her like good night routine and i'm right behind her to do my good night routine but saturday nights i don't usually do that because i'm here but uh oh she was throwing a fit i had actually we had to postpone starting to record because uh <laughs> i had to go do the daddy, daddy put duties down. yeah daddy duties mm-hmm. just they're not me just for toilets fuzzies. <laughs> yeah okay cool cool um okay before we get started uh let's see here who's gonna be doing it today Njord, what do we gotta do first before we get started to our main topic well ladies and gentlemen boys and girls come one come all today we've got to keep up with 
What is in your cup? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I love so, that. Mr. Sensei John, what ah. is in your cup? Well, thank you for asking, your God. Today I got a lovely mix. This is crazy because somebody was just talking about these at the, uh, at the JLB. And, um, yeah, this is my mixer tonight. So, you know, I'm still uh, drinking on the same thing. Ain't nothing changed. Tommy Chain say what? Same thing. <clears throat> same thing. Uh, that's what we say at Domino's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Casamigos. Casamigos, you know. We're going to do the same thing. Oh, but my mixer tonight, you know, a uh, little apple flavor. I don't even know how to say this. Y'all go ahead and take a look. What is that? Waritos? You know what I mean? It's uh, Cidro Mundet. Yeah. A little apple flavor, uh, sparkling apple. Okay. Uh, <laughs> He getting classy it's tonight. Good. Sparkling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gla hey, glass bottle. I had to go get a uh, whole little <laughs> little uh, maneuver over here. You oh know wow! What I mean? <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> my it, sandals you know have I mean? one of those in them. Right. I'm gonna say you gotta stay. With my my wallet has a bottle opener on it. So <laughs> yeah, my keys got one on it. But shit, I ain't got them up here. So this is what I'm working with. You okay. know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, that's me today, man. You know, keeping it simple, keeping it classic, keeping it real. All right, all right, all right. Little Matthew McConaughey there for you. Mr. Sean Flack, what is in your cup? What is in my cup? Um, you know, it's the black can today, right? Ah. But um, the black can is just um, some, uh, what is it, zero sugar uh, cherry Pepsi. That's what, so that's what I'm drinking on tonight. Wild, well, hold on, wild cherry. So it's just not no hey, regular. Zero it's sugar. The wild, wild West. <laughs> <laughs> zero sugar. <laughs> Hey, does it really, really like taste unsweetened? Or uh, no. give us a little. No, I mean, you know, I've got, I, I drink diet drinks, so like, you know, it, it, you know, it's. I know it doesn't taste like the regular kind because the regular kind, you know, it has a. But this, I gotten so used to it, I couldn't even tell you the difference. Regular kind got a little bite to it. Oh yeah, make you burp and all that stuff. Yeah. Bad business. <laughs> all right. Let's go to the next, Mr. Crinley. What is in your cup? Same name, different flavor. I got the Voodoo Ranger. Tropical Force. Yeah. Oh, I thought I said Tropic Force. Thunder for a second. No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah. What's that? What, what, yeah. Uh, 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 what is that little, like, uh, looks like a shark? or I don't know. What, what is that on it's top of It's a skeleton of? wearing, like, a... Yeah, it looks like a shark, I guess. The helmet does. Oh, okay. No, but, did he? Yeah, it's his helmet. It's a skeleton <laughs> wearing like an old fighter jet helmet. Nice. nice. Um, All um, right. What is it? Well, come on, give us a, a sample of. Uh, give us a, amuse our imaginations. What what flavor? You know, tropical thunder. But what what is that? Uh, no. It's tropic. Uh, it's, it's an IPA. It's not tropic thunder. Tropical thunder. <laughs> tropical <laughs> tropic <laughs> force. What it's like I got the fruit like? force. It's oh, Diddy. Mm. What does the end taste like? <laughs> <laughs> Sweat and tears. Oh uh, no! But, <laughs> um, I mean, it's got like a fruity aftertaste, but it's good. Okay. Well, fruity. It's an IPA fruity. for sure. <laughs> Very nice, oh. very nice. Okay. Um, last season, ladies and gentlemen, we were running a promotion on. If you could guess in the comments. What Sensei John's drink was, we would shout you out live on stream. We'd have a stream recording, whatever oh, you want to call it. I have a, a update on that last one, but go ahead. Okay. Um, and and no one got it, but we we mentioned that we were going to do that for me this season. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to reveal what is usually in my cup. Um, if you want to know what is in my cup, go watch most of last season. If not all, shoot, just do them all. Um, yes, do them all. But today, <laughs> no ditty. No um, ditty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But today, I've got uh, pineapple oh. coconut bubbly. That looks right. delicious. What is that, Target? That's Target, right? Bubbly? No, is that the bubbly. Brand? Yeah. You get it from Target. Bubbly is like a name brand. Yeah. You can get it at Walmart, Target, anywhere. Oh, I thought it was a Target only thing. No, I like it's Bubbly. Not Target. 
It's not we Target, pretty much... it's Target. Target. Oh, here we go. I thought we were the only family that did that. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome to the club. Right. <laughs> but yes, so again, normally I do have some kind of alcohol, liquor, in my cup, but not tonight. But if you guess what is usually my liquor, I will shout you out with a cool voice. We will put you in the credits, whatever we got to do to get you guys drawn in. So with that, Mr. <laughs> Sean Flack said he had an update. Yeah, I had an update. Actually, my wife, she commented on, I want to say, episode number seven about what was in the cup. So she just picked oh. the episode and and then she put like a Casamigos boom, we're done or something like that. So we got to give her a good okay, shot. Okay, 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 <laughs> wifey, right on, Mel. All right, what, 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 is, um, what is wifey's stage <laughs> name or whatever? <laughs> we're going to call her the Moody Mermaid. The Moody Ooh, Mermaid. All right. <laughs> I like that. So in episode seven of season four, the Moody Mermaid came through our comments and guessed correctly. Since a John's jury, shout out to you, Moody Mermaid. <laughs> Go ahead and give her the horn. She's a Taurus too. That was excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, so again, this season, guys, we're going to be going with um, what is in New York God's Cup. If you're interested, again, like you said, a good idea is just to check all the episodes out. Uh, leave comments. Let us know what you think. And of course, if you do guess what is in his cup, we're going to give you that good old shout out right here live on stream. Okay. So without hey, further ado. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. hey, the Moody Mermaid is a dope. She, that's a dope name and she dope. You know why? Because I'm a Taurus too. So. Yeah, oh. Shout out to her. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, again, this was something that, um, well, again, on the podcast, we always want to go back to, excuse me, um, dads, dads and our dads and talking about people, um, that meant to us, meant something to us. And, and so this one was a topic that was early on suggested, but again, we want to kind of get back into it, uh, for season number five. And on today's topic, we're going to be talking about father figures that, um, we're not our actual fathers, and it could be anybody. So as you guys hear and listen to our stories, I guys want you to think about who was that person in your life if you had one. And it could be, you know, in, in, in some of the cases where I live, it sometimes is mom. So don't don't be, you know, embarrassed or, you know, think that that's an indifferent kind of connotation to look at that. Um, but, you know, if, if they're, hey, you know, Diddy, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. I might have to edit that out. I might not. But um, again, I started slipping. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, so again, as, as you yes, hear, he did. Who we, uh, um, you know, who we bring to the episode, and kind of, you know, who is that person in your life? Go ahead and leave comments in the description or in the comment section below about, um, you know, who was your father figure that wasn't your father. So, um, I know I brought this one up. I probably want to go last on this one um if you guys want to kind of take it away and we'll again see where we uh hey, hey, why you get to go last oh, no. I, I, I might have to take up most of the show you know what i'm saying it just depend on how fast well, or how long y'all talk okay okay <laughs> all right who's right, gonna go first who's uh, gonna go first oh you know what Crin dog should always go first from from here on out. all right because <laughs> uh, yeah. i'm probably gonna take the least yeah. amount of time anyway so. <laughs> Dog, I don't know. <laughs> All right, what you got for All us? Um, I was thinking about it, and at first, I was thinking, of course, my grandfather, my father's father, because I mean, looking back through, like my dad was just like him, and I'm just like both of them. But I got to think about it more, and I was thinking about my stepmother's father. And how much inspiration I kind of got from him. More so as a father and a husband and than like anything else, honestly. Because that's really the only part of him I ever got to see. Like, I, um, whenever my dad and stepmother first got married, it was like he wasn't really there much. He worked second shift, so I was mostly there from like after school till my parents picked me up at night. And... Eventually he retired, and then he was home more often, and I got to see him. And because him and my grandmother were married for like 
you know, you know the old, old how the old folks were. They were married for life. They were just ages. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they were true to each other to the end. Like they just had they it was the perfect. I guess the portrait marriage or whatever. You know, like their lives weren't always perfect, but. You know, they did the best that they could for each other and their family and and I saw that a lot in the in the way he acted not just towards them but about himself you know and all right so one of the things I remember that you know, obviously you could tell by looking at me I didn't pick up this trait from him but he was telling me how he always <laughs> And it's, he adapted this from being in the army, and he carried it on after that too. But it's like whenever he would go from point A to point B, like at home, you know, doing work around the house and stuff, he would run wherever he, whatever he was doing. If he was going from one place to another, he would run just because it was faster, and you know, get there, and then you do it. He was all about just getting it done. And obviously, I didn't pick up that trait either. So, <laughs> oh, <geez>. but. <laughs> But he was an inspiration, nonetheless. Okay. All right. That was my yeah. father figure. Okay. So let me let me ask you one question. Yes, that was like one of the fondest memories um, that you have of him. Um, I mean, just that and just stuff I learned from him because he was real handy with his hands. Like, like they like to build stuff. Like they were. Growing up, they were farmers. That was what they did. Like, they had a farm. That's how they made their living. You know, they got up in the morning, milked the cows, and all that before going to school. And they kind of instilled a lot of those ideas on me. But, like, you know, obviously things were different when I was younger and growing up with them than it was when they were young. But a lot of the ideas, the uh, the ways of thinking that they used in those times they kind of passed on through me okay very nice that's good hey you ever did any um uh, picking of the uh peas or anything else like that with him i never really did any of the the gardening stuff with them uh for me it was mostly cutting like cutting grass because they had a huge yard with a bunch of trees and <laughs> hey, did blackberries you like a- i did but i did blackberries okay, okay. When, when um you had to pick those from the like uh the, the bush, yeah. bush or whatever yeah, yeah yeah so did you like how the hell did you like if they had so much freaking um like how did you use the lawnmower were you sitting on it were you was it were you behind oh, yeah. it they had oh, a riding mower because I mean they were one of those like, they were good with their money like they didn't buy anything they didn't need but they had money for what they did need you know so they had the riding mower. Yeah, they're riding more, huh? Yeah, I always wanted yeah. to see them. I, wanted, I always wanted enough land to be able to, uh, you know, sit on one of those. I could do that in my backyard. <laughs> I'd be done in two swipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was That's called a Bowlands, and every time you would turn it off when you were done, pow! <laughs> it never failed. True. Backfire, huh? Man, and pow, man, and they go Bowlands. Yeah, <laughs> That's what's up. I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, uh, the lawnmower I was using when um, when I was growing up, I was literally pushing that mower. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, hey, yeah. It didn't have no motor or nothing. Like it was the blade spinning. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. yeah. I didn't oh, wow. have better hope your yard was flat. Right, right. You know, that's how I got down. That's Wait mean, you were. That's mean. Yeah, it, 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 definitely. It, it, in my mind, I had a little Cadillac, you know, that called my mom used to call it the Cadillac. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't have it as bad as you did, Sean. But you know, I, uh, you know, started up, oh, yeah, you know, none none of that thing, you know, no. and that motherfucker I had the little handle up buttons, so you go clip, and that motherfucker go. Whoa. Well, it was self propelled. Oh man, you was blessed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, my grandparents had one of those, but I didn't when I was a kid. You know, Sean, you I had know, a bunch of some bitches. <laughs> But yeah, the blades did turn themselves. Okay. All right. They, Home you said they did? Grandpa. You said the blades did turn themselves? Apparently, he was talking to I'm you. I'm talking about yours. 
Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I have to push that. Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. At least they turned themselves. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, my, my John, did too. <laughs> John Flack was out there building muscle yeah. while he was uh, yeah, right. mowing lawns. Right. Oh. That's, I mean, that's how I was doing it. You know, and then we and then we had to pick up when we had to rake up all the le uh the, the grass afterwards too. So you know. Oh no, I had a bag, baby. You, you see, nah, we didn't have none of that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was privileged. Okay. Yeah, we were a little, <laughs> little privileged. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, we had the bag, but we had to make sure we put that shit around the plants and around the trees. Like it wasn't just dumping so, it. Oh, you had to use it. Oh yeah, in my grandparents' yard. Yeah, the parts that I would have to push mo. I would have a bag and I would dump all the dead grass around the plants, flowers and you stuff never, they had. You ever had to milk a cow or a goat? No, they didn't have all that when I was there. That was when they were younger. What about chickens? Did they have chickens? No, they they had corn for a while. They had a small like vegetable garden when I was with okay. them. But okay, that's cool, man. Okay. Okay, who would um, like to go next? Guy. Is your mouth full of uh, chocolate? Yeah, I was gonna say he's he's a little, <laughs> he's a little busy over there. What's yeah, what's yeah. in your, what's on your plate, Nyord? Let's tell you what's in that uh, Tupperware. So, uh, I said my 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 family went to a Cheesecake Factory in Memphis. I've got cheesecake from Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what that that's what that brown shit is. No, just no. <laughs> oh god, and it's so good too. I know it is, man. We had a little potluck at the job today, man. Man, we actually this lady made some um, chocolate cake. It's so delicious. Oh See, god. I should have. I should have came. I should have. No, nah, I shouldn't. Have. You should have came. Nah, you know what? I'm gonna tell you right now. The worst day away from the job is always gonna be the better than the best day at the job. So yeah, I guess. So. Yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> um, okay. While not, while while Njord fills his mouth, his gullet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I go dick. Okay. Um, so I'm. I was torn on this question because. Uh, you know, I've always been around strong black men. Strong men, period. But um, I've always been around uh, older men. And I have a few. I got, got a couple of little stories. Everybody has like a little place. So, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my dad was always my dad. Boom. My grandfather. My grandfather was. um, Yeah. Uh, my grandfather was, uh, always like, let me see, um, stern, uh, very, uh, like, uh, stoic. So he was a great figure in my life, which was great. Then, you know, I have, um, uh, what else? Is he, is he muted? I don't it's know. Isn't that confusing? John, you're throwing us off, dude. Yeah, he's throwing me off, dog, because he's talking. He got to edit this out. Well, I'm throwing you off. Yeah, yeah, Hell you yeah. are. You can see, you just sit there like, I'm... don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Okay, so you have to edit this part out. Sorry. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. My bad. I'm still going to be talking, though, but. No, time stamp it. do your thing. At least okay. we know you ain't like, going on a tangent. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not going on a tangent. Um, I'm going to start over. So my grandfather um, was one of the uh, big factors in my life. Um, He's very stoic, very, you know, um, really, you know, hard. I remember one time, I'm going to give you a quick story. He, uh, I was like 15. So, yeah, I was a little older and I was watching cartoons and he was like um when you gonna start watching cartoons I swear from that day I stopped watching cartoons he just like knew exactly what to ask me it's funny uh but I have a bunch of uh figures in my life um let's say um just men because um you know I always uh gravitated towards um older people so um my boy, uh, well, I say, I say my boy, but he was actually like my boss um, back in the day uh, when I used to 
worked in high school and then a little after high school where I worked at like the Air Force Base. Um, and he actually came to my graduation. Uh, he was in the military, you know what I mean? Uh, but he was like really cool and really like personable as a, um, as a boss, you know, as a manager. So it was like, um, really, uh, cool to be like, uh, me and him hang out after work, you know, we talk, you know, cause he, he always like took a liking to me and, uh, me and my other friend, um, who is now, I think he lives in Texas, but yeah, we God would just sit down Texas. and talk. Huh? <laughs> I said, God, God bless, bless Texas. Yeah. 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 God bless them. So, uh, you know, um, it was really cool. Cause like during, let me see, like during that time when I graduated, my dad was over in, um, Iraq and, uh, he actually, like I said, the guy, I won't mention his name, but he actually just like showed up to my um, um, graduation and he came over, you know, for uh, some, some, some fiddles. Is that how you say it? Vittles after the, uh, excuse for me, after the vittles. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, some vittles. I had to go. <laughs> uh, vittles after the, um, after the uh, graduation. So my mom got a chance to meet him, you know, and it, it was really cool. So, uh, he was one figure and, and it's always been like different type of um, male figures in my life um, that is always kind of like gave me some game, you know what I mean? To, to go to the next, you know, level, I, I would say just to boost and boost my horizon and my knowledge of becoming a young man and a young black man too at that. Um, he, my dad's friend when my dad was in Iraq as well, you know, but even before then, it was always like him and I, whenever we talked, it was like, uh, you know, he'd give me some different type of game or a different type of, um, understanding in life. Uh, especially even when my dad was around, um, that's where I got that. Wherever you, wherever you are, that's where it's happening. It don't matter where, where, where you at. You know, nobody else is at, but where you are, that's where it's going down. So, um, uh, shout out to him. Um, he's up there in heaven looking down upon us. Uh, I also like, it's funny because I would always meet these people, type of people like, uh, at my jobs. Um, Mm. oh, wait, no, I got another one. My best friend, shout out to, uh, my boy, Ron. Uh, his dad, uh, we lived up the street from each other. And, uh, one of the things is it, it will always stick with me. One of the things he always said, uh, he said, Hey, y'all better not fuck up y'all credit. <laughs> that was one of the things he always used to say to us. He's like, it take a long time for your credit to come back. You know what I mean? Uh, so he would give us like different life lessons and different things. A like hardworking man. Uh, he works for the company across the bay. You know what I mean, Sean? The other, the other, the other one that we that 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 we uh, not rival, but you right. know, yeah, we coincide with each other. There you go. Right, 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 right. Uh, and he was always like, you know, um, giving us little tidbits, little things. Um, and I, actually, I think he's going to be retiring here soon. So shout out to him. You know who you are if you watch this Dad's Life podcast. Uh, let me see. Uh, it, it, for me, it was just like a, a plethora of people that really like, like always was in my ear or, you know, because they seen, you know, the I guess they seen the like the way I carry myself as a young man, as well as um, uh, the maturity that I had as a young man. So um, I'll never forget uh, one of my friends uh, who I actually uh, RIP to him. Uh, He's from Richmond. And uh, he was like possibly like 10 years older than me, but he showed me like 
a different side, like a street side, you know what I mean? Of some different, different things. It gave me some knowledge about the streets and when I was real young, you know what I mean? Working at this other job I had when I was like 18. And, um, me and him used to, you know, we used to have fun, uh, chill out. You know, we worked at the same place for a while and, uh, he just, you know, um, had like a soft spot in my heart because, uh, we didn't come from the same place, you know, type of family or whatever, but he still introduced me to his family. His family was great. You know what I mean? Um, his sisters and brothers, they was always cool, always like, uh, welcoming, but you know, they was from the streets. So I got a little game in my life um, uh, to be able to maneuver through these streets, you know, wherever I'm at. You know, I can adapt to, to anything. But it's just who I am. But, uh, yeah, let me see. Do I got one more? Uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so me is a plethora of people because I always like to um, gain knowledge from everywhere else. I don't have any like um like set figures in my life. It's always who will give me something or who who can who can, you know, give me some game or some knowledge that I can, you know, pass on to generations, you know, like my kids or um be able to um you know work in my life. I like to work things, you know, give me some knowledge. I go check it. I, you know, re, you know, uh, uh, research the knowledge and I go use the knowledge. That, that's just me. So yeah. Shout out to all of them. I forgot anybody. Uh, please don't hold me uh hostage, but, uh, those, those were significant people in my life. Uh, I know I didn't mention any names, but you know who you are. Thank you. That's a beautiful thing right there. Man. Oh, here we go, huh? <laughs> um, you know, those are some great people and some great stories and stuff like that. Um, Neord, were you ready to start? You know, okay. All right. Yeah, Whatever. Go. Take it away, player. So I've got, since apparently we're doing multiple, I've got two. <laughs> and, and I won't go past that, I promise. Um, the, the first one's going to be my grandfather. Um, I was actually named after him. He was a senior as well as my uncle. He was a junior. I, uh, your grandpa was named, named your God. That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. He, he was, he was your God senior. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and if it weren't for my last name, I'd be the third type deal. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that man saw so much during his life and had a crud ton of wisdom to kind of pass on like you all, you know, my family's military. Um, my grandfather retired from the Navy as a chief and then he, he served through Vietnam. After he got out of the military, he was still a civilian contractor with the Navy. Um, and then he became a pastor, which w- was, if if you talk to any of the people that were under his command when he was in the Navy, <laughs> they never would have thought that in a million years. His nickname used to be Little Hitler. Um, guys, I, I'm I'm five foot five, and I was taller than my grandfather, okay? Wow. <laughs> he, was, he was a Little mean... Hitler cuss son like, of a gun uh. <laughs> oh man I, I, I there are stories that he would tell me like as to why that so when you're deployed on a ship you still have to do like when you come back from lee um you get a, a liberty pass from the ship and all that right you still have to do inspections on the flight deck well apparently the there was this like six foot three black guy who kept who showed up during inspection one time with an earring during inspection. <laughs> That's a big no no. My my grandfather looked at him and goes, 
listen here, what does military regs say? And he goes, I can't have an earring. And he said, all right, don't let me catch it in on this deck again, or I'll pull it out. <laughs> Guy goes, okay, cool. About a week and a half later, my grandfather does another inspection, right? And there's the dude with the earring again. My grandfather didn't say one word to him, just reached up and ripped that earring right out of the ear. Yikes. <laughs> Apparently, that guy took my grandfather to the captain and was like, you know, kind of crying about it all. And, you know, the captain looks at him and goes, what does military dress code say? Can you have that? No, I can't. Well, get the hell out of my, <laughs> get the hell off my bridge, you know. And turns to my grandfather goes, Ooh. could you not? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, and then, like, to go from that, like, my mom used to tell me stories that she never got spanked or, or whipped or anything like that because he just had a look that made her pee your pants. You know? So from going from that to being a pastor, right? Just a complete 180 change. I don't know. And, love. Yeah. And <laughs> the things that they, I would do growing up, my mom would sit here and be like, are you kidding me? I would have got whipped three sides left of Sunday if I did that. And you're like, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> You know, um, yeah. my grandfather drove to Virginia during my parents' divorce to pick up my mom and I and drove me back, drove us both back. Um, I was like three years old. So obviously that was not a fun car ride because I know what it's like with a two year old. Um, all the way back to San Diego where I was then raised and he he and my grandmother were a big part of my life all the way through when he turned 50. Um, he had a double bypass open heart surgery and my mom, we actually cut our pool in half, um, like the shallow end of our pool in half. And we built an entire two story like addition that, ha that was its own house. I'm talking like three bedroom, full kitchen, laundry room, all of that. That way they can move in and we could keep eyes on my grandfather, you know, but. Growing up, I remember I, I knew exactly when our nap times were because when Matlock and Murder She Wrote were <laughs> off the TV, <laughs> like yeah, so, it would yeah. it would go Murder She Wrote and then Matlock, and then it was time for nap. <laughs> like that's just how it was. My sister was the same way. We always knew after Matlock, time to go to bed. Oh, and Monk, Monk as well. How old were you at when Monk was out? I remember <laughs> right? watching that show as like I know, almost, almost like an adult, an adult. almost though. Yeah. I'm I'm 33. Yeah, you like, little baby, <laughs> baby of the group. But uh, it, it's just one of those things, you know. Looking back at it all, when he would watch us, he would take me to the church with him so he could study and or clean up or do all of this, that, and the other, and. Just the life lessons that he would he would kind of guide me through, you know, being able to see kind of the both sides of, I guess, the world, right? Kind of going from one in the Navy, being mean, seeing how cruel the world can be to being a pastor and seeing God's love and all of that, you know, being able yeah. to see and teach how mean and cruel this world can be and help prepare, mm -hmm. you know? Um. It had some of its downsides being a, a, a pastor's grandson, though, right? Like, I wrestled throughout high school, and if we had a wrestling match on a Wednesday, guess who couldn't be there for the entire thing? And hope to God that I was able to... My weight class was called up before I had to leave to go to church, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but e eventually, obviously, you know, like all, all people do, it, it's guaranteed we're going we're gonna to die, you know? and um, he started taking a turn for the worst. He wasn't able to get up his up his two story house anymore, even with a stair lift to get to his bedroom. So we sold our house in California and we moved to Northeast Tennessee. Um, kind of get him out in the countryside, let him see everything, and and he loved it, absolutely loved it. But unfortunately, and and when we got to Tennessee though, is when we were able to start applying for him for VA benefits, and he was award he was awarded a full 100% disability from his service because he his he was a diesel mechanic 
on the ships. Um, and his ships carried Agent Orange. So he has a lot of, of that. He had a lot of those issues that, that's affiliated with it. Um, soon after we got to Tennessee, he tripped, fell, and he broke his hip. And that was kind of the, the beginning of the downfall. Um, and then he got better. He was walking around again. He fell out of bed one night and broke his other hip. And from then on out, it was just him in a wheelchair, right? And one of the my favorite memories, though, is like the, the Christmas before he passed. So he passed in May of 2021. Um, I got Christmas recorded that previous Christmas. So May, December of 2020. I have that recorded and on videos and just being able to see him light up and have all that was awesome. I can't sit here and think of any of the individual lessons that he taught me just because everything that he taught me was just so invaluable. I mean, he lived with me for ages, right? So it's just everything. Um, And he's missed. He's greatly missed. Um, My next person. This will be a little bit shorter because she was only involved during my high school years. Um, was my theater teacher. She was awesome. Uh, you know, she does theater, so Miss White, she has no problem being named. I know that for a fact. <laughs> um, this woman it was also my U.S. history teacher and probably the only reason I graduated high school, if I'm being honest. I was just sitting here talking with my with my wife, and I was like, yeah. I'd... She signed me out of math class all the time as well as English class. I have no idea. I know for a fact there are projects I never turned in. <laughs> and somehow, <laughs> I still passed. Yay. No clue. No clue. No clue. Um, but she became an integral part of my family as well. I mean, she she became a second... I guess mom, she, I even gave her an award for it. World's greatest second mom, you know, and the work ethic that she had, the, the joy that it, that brought her, you know, creating these productions and helping kids realize and get to be better potentials and all of that is just invaluable. And being able to see that she also made learning fun. Right. I mean, I, it is easy for me because I'm a U.S. history nerd. I love U.S. history. So I excelled in that class. But like she would do full on like skits for different things, so, like have the kids participate in U.S. history who have nothing to do with theater, like participate in different skits of, of you know, the uh, Abraham Lincoln's four score, you, you know, address. All of that, have kids dress up as Abraham Lincoln and, and actually present it. Um, it was a lot of fun. She came to my graduation. Um, she came to the after party for my graduation as well uh, with my family. Like the dinner that you all have, that you hand out the gifts and you ask for the money, and it's awesome. The after the, party party. Yeah, the after party party. <laughs> I remember we went to Ruby's. We went to Ruby's for that party down on the pier in Huntington Beach. It was awesome. Love that one. Ruby's. Yes. And then we actually she's she's met my daughter when I've flown back to California. Um, she's met my wife. I, I mean, she's still a part of my life to this day. Uh, and just watching everything that she's still doing. She's not at the same school anymore. She went to a different school. Um, but yeah, Miss White, she's awesome and always be, have a special place in my heart. So shout out to, shout out to her. Shout out to Gramps. That's what's up. Okay. Funny. I had a um, teacher in middle school. Her name was Miss White. She also taught me sign language. That's cool. Heck yeah. Shout out to teachers in general, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. They don't make enough, man. Yeah. Pay them, <laughs> pay them teachers. Shit. I'm telling you. Okay. Well, um, you know, thank you for sharing those. Um, yeah. you know, so for me, um there was a um, you know, I have um I grew up in East Oakland and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to name no names, but they know who they will because I got a, I got a shout out to Oh them. boy. 
know what I'm saying, and let them know what the good word is. Um, but um, so um, my dad, he did body work. He worked on cars in East Oakland, and um, you know he had a, he had a place in some of his business associates. Um, I consider them my godfathers. You know, they watched me grow up and stuff like that. Um, you know, the one in particular that comes to my mind. Um, and you know, he passed away a couple years ago and, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to say it without saying any names. I'm gonna try to, but, um, you know, not only, you know, it, 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 what brought this to me was he was there for me when, um, when I was just becoming a dad. And, um, you know, my dad, he moved out of state and, you know, I'm trying to sit here and, you know, make it on my own, on two feet, just have my son. And, you know, uh, as I was growing up, like his business associate worked at a warehouse when warehousing, they did warehousing logistics. And, you know, this is before I had my son, but, you know, I was looking for a job. I, you know, just got done with, you know, working at McDonald's and he was like, Hey, you know, um, if you're looking for a job, you know, I can get one for you working at this warehouse. So, you know, I'm, you know, the young OG or whatever, trying to, you know, make ends meet, you know, trying to get up on my own two feet. And so McDonald's was no longer cutting it after high school. So I took on that job and then I went to go work for Walmart. Mm. Um, but, you know, come to find out that, you know, basically any young man that needed a job, you know, it's warehouse work. So it's, you know, forklifts and, you know, slanging boxes. We you actually um, uh, did furniture. We were like a furniture cross dock people would order furniture or mattresses or whatever and they would go from some place and we'd have to move them from truck to tr unload the truck load the truck unload the truck load the truck big furniture so it was it was a tough job we got paid weekly but it paid way more than the mcdonald job and so you know i was able to you know but you know he helped everybody like hey you know one of the young cousins or something like that the young brothers from the hood or whatever hey man if you want to work it, it's not easy work but I can get you work at the warehouse, whatever, whatever. And this was one of my dad's associates. And, um, you know, like one of his business associates. Um, so there was that. Like, you know, he just was there when I was just trying to get my, my feet on the door. You know, get my feet under me. And um, he had always been there, no matter what. For me, my sister, you know. And I want to say, uh, there's I don't know if I want to say there's like some, some kind of falling out. But, you know, there was like we hadn't talked in years or whatever. And I just had my son and they had no car, no nothing. And what they did was they sold, they had a used car sales. Like that's my dad worked on cars and he was an associate with them. They sold used cars. And, um, we're talking and, you know, he was, uh, you know, I did everything I could. Like I, I borrowed cars, you know, I was on the bus, I was on the train, you know, getting my son around. He was a newborn baby. You know, so I'm just doing what I can with the little jobs that I had. And, you know, I want to say I reached out to him and um, kind of told him my situation. Like, hey, you know, can I get a car from you? Whatever. But, you know, again, I'm new dad, not having no money or nothing like that. And we hadn't talked in years and there was like a falling out. But, you know, he, you know, was on the phone. He said, look, he said, you go, go to the lot. You can pick any car you want. Any car. Let me get a scraper. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's what they were. You know, there wasn't like no BMW, but he was like, any car that I have, you can get. You could come get. You know, obviously sign the contracts. He said, don't worry about no down payment. Don't worry about, you know, just pay what you can every month. And, you know, I was so grateful. You know, I mean, because, again, well, I'm, cool. I'm trying to do the right thing. But it's starting to rain and having my newborn son on you know the bus and the train and you know like a friend of mine she had gave me a car seat but i didn't have no car to put it in you know what i'm saying so i was like embarrassed but you know i you know so and then like i said we had a falling out and so he was just like man don't even trip like that's water under the bridge you know whatever car i have on there just sign up the paperwork pay what you can pay and and i made sure that I paid every, every time I got paid, I put a little money on it until I finally mm -hmm. paid the car off. What I ended up picking was a a ninety eight Cavalier. You know what I'm saying? Ninety eight oh, Chevy Cavalier. Cavalier. Yeah. It was a little little yeah. red car. It was it had a stick shift, so you know it, it you know it had sat on the lot for a little bit. So I just I wasn't like oh let me get the most expensive car on the lot. You know let me you know and I paid them off and 
um, you know, every time I'd go there. But I mean, big shout out to him because, you know, when when I didn't have it at all, he had been Man. in my life, you know, just, you know, in association with my dad. But, you know, they were always helping people out. They were always, you know, having people. And, and yeah, I can't thank them enough. And then especially, I didn't know what I was doing with a kid. I just knew I had to continue to do what I was supposed to do. and um, Take care. Yeah. And he, you know, he just was like, look, you can have anything on the lot. I don't, you know, it's I get it. You young. You know what I'm saying? You, you're trying to do the best thing with your kid. You don't want your kid in the rain and, and you don't want them on the bus and the train. Um, come to, you know, and if, and if you pay me cool. And if you don't, I don't care. You know, that's the feeling I got. Like he was like, don't yeah. even trip. But I made sure my little 200, 200 every month until I got it paid <laughs> off. Hey. And then my other guy, father, um, you know, he had a lot of, you know, he, he had a lot of game too, but, um, because they both ran ran the spot together, and I would never get to see the Godfather that sold me the car. I always saw the other Godfather, and he ran um, like six and eight. <laughs> right, yeah, and, uh, me. and so you know, I, I you know, um, I, I'd pay him. You know, so every every month I come through, I'd pay, 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 whatever. And then like you know, finally I paid it off, and he was like, "Oh, you made all your payments." And I made, Ooh, oui. yeah, I said I made sure, like, I, I can't even show how much gratefulness I have with that. And with that car, I gave it to somebody, you know, as, cause it was, it was damn near given to me, damn near. Right. right. So, but when I got it paid off, I gave it to a friend that, you know, that needed it. You know, I was like trying to pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, cause I was, you know, got a better job, you know, was able to get more on my feet. But if I didn't have the opportunity to have that vehicle so I could kind of get around where I needed to be. I wouldn't have been able to get the job that I got. And, um, yeah. So that when this came, he was the first person that came to my mind when it came to, uh, this. And, you know, I made sure when I got married, you know, we've been, me and the wife been together for like 12 years. My, my wife, I made sure that they came. Right. And I want to say they was, you know, like, you know, but, it was interesting because you know what I'll do is I'll go ahead and post a picture up. I'll try to get it up on post so you guys can see. But my father and both of them, I wanted to make sure they both came. But my two godfathers both came to my wedding and got a yeah, great picture yeah. of them. And, um, you know, they're like, who are these two brothers? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm Asian, Filipino, Chamorro. Yeah. You know, my wife is, you know, she's like white and, you know, white and Japanese. And so, you know, like, who are, you know what I'm saying? Who are these folks? And hey, who are uh, these black men up in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I had to make sure that, you know, and, and I love them for it. You know, and I'm as a matter of fact, you know. Yeah, like I said, the one he passed away, and you know, I, th- I think after this episode, I need to reach out to my other godfather and tell him, you know, um, how much I appreciate and how I love, how much I love um, him. Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's you know, like I said, it, it, I felt it like you know, me being a dad and trying to do the right thing, and and they were there for me, both of them. You know, both of them just tried to give me the best advice that they could, and and. Um, yeah, you know, I I couldn't have made some of the moves I, I I did, and without the help, number one, and then of course that whole thing about the whole car thing, um, yeah, that that that's why I I'm kind of you know I'm I'm giving I like I like yeah. to give because man that that changed my yeah. life. It did. Yeah. So I see it. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I know. Nah, your story. <laughs> that was a good. That was a good one, dog. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Man, I can you know, <laughs> shout out to them, man. They they help propel man we see today. Yeah. It, man, like I said, I have you know, like I said, uh, uh Sean yeah. is very giving and very loving. Yeah, it, you know what I mean? Man. So Black 2.0, man. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe to that boy channel, man. You know what I mean? Uh, that's my that's my that's my karate partner. You know what I mean. <laughs> Whoop your ass if you see us in the in the streets. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, it's a one two combo. Nah. So go ahead. You know that's basically it. Um, you know, thank you guys for sharing. 
you know, you know who who those people were in your life. I mean, you know, for the listeners, yeah. definitely, um, you know, think about that. You know, who who in your life inspired you, other than just your dad, you know, yeah. and, and you know the teachers, you know the you know our 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 mentors, you know, and again, put that down in the comments below. You know, uh, uh, maybe somebody that uh, that that mentored you, that inspired you to do more. I mean, you know. Dads is dads. I get it. But in today's society, um, you know, we're trying to do the best we can and, and some of us can't. And so, you know, for mm -hmm. those folks that have stepped up to help mold you or help mold us, shout out to all of them and then whoever they yes. may be. That's all Thank I basically you. got. Um, that's basically all the time we got left for the recording on this episode. So I just want to make sure... Um, yeah, I might have to edit this out because I'm I'm kind of lost to where we go from here. <laughs> nah, but anybody got any last shout outs today? You know, father figures or anybody got like anything they want to say? Um, I want to, yeah, uh, yeah. Come on, fill us in. I want to go ahead and shout out these two gentlemen on the bottom here, Mr. Sean Flack and Sensei John, because you know me and your God were kind of different coming into being fathers than they were, like. We were, I want to say we were kind of lucky. I mean, they had, the, the struggle was real down there with those guys, and they <laughs> persevered, and here they are. The struggle was real story. down here, dog. Right. So if you go back to the last season and watch the first two episodes, you'll hear all about that. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh, no, no, thank we, you, Mr. Crinley. We, yeah, Crinley, we it. thought we were, we had struggles in our own life, and then we heard their struggles. We're like, oh shit, right, right. good, right? <laughs> you motherfucker, right. fucked up, but you know what I mean? No, <laughs> nah. Hey, no, 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 no. I know that's big, dog. I yeah, appreciate I, I that, appreciate man. That's that really, yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. I've got one more person, real quick, and I'm gonna make this quick. Okay, okay, make this quick. Um, <laughs> Sean, you're a father figure to me. Oh, being being now. straight up no hold on hold on hold on okay come on being being real okay for the last three going on four years right you've mm. been that voice in my head of of calm collect cool and and navigating a lot of waters right and that is what a father figure does right You've you've been there. You 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 helped guide me in different ways when we were running SPG, and and, and you've always been there. I I know that I've always been able to call you up if I've been struggling with something, and you would talk to me about it and, and work work through it with me. So yeah, don't sell yourself short on that, and don't don't take nothing <laughs> like the wrong way. But like, dude, you've been a father figure to me for the last three of going on four years. So oh, man, I, shout man, out to I, you. I, man, man. Man, I appreciate you on that. I appreciate you. Um, hey, so hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, again, this is going to be the end of uh, th this episode here. Um, but we are going to remind you guys that we are doing our Patreon recording after the show. So if you're interested mm -hmm. in that, you can check out some of the free episode stuff mm -hmm. that we have on our Patreon page. So shout out to all the patrons. If you are not a patron, shit's going to be lit. <laughs> it's the, it's the, after the party party you know what I mean? <laughs> ain't no diddy uh, you can head over to shadowpackwest.com um, you can head over there and get all of our contact information go into the pack tab all of us are up there with our little mini bios with all of our contact information and contact icons um, you can shout us out on X. You can shout us out on um, Instagram. You know, we're on the different show circles. And if you head over there, you'll get all of our in contact information there. Also, while you're there, you can sign up for our patronage page. There's, there's a link right there. It'll take you straight to the Patreon uh, where you can sign up for your patronage. as little as $1 a month. And uh, we want to say thank you for listening to this week's episode. And we'll uh, talk to you guys in the next episode of the Dad's Life Podcast where you can get your... Dad life. Dad life. Dad, Dad life. advice. It is what it is. I'm just saying, no. We're never going to get it. No, we're not. <laughs>